latest episode of the Impact Room. My name is Perry Fletcher, a high-end retained executive search consultant exclusively focused on data central businesses, and I help deliver conforming, impactful leadership across the data, planning, insight, and analytical world. Today, I'm joined by Nick Cray, who's a senior leader in analytics. Nick has worked for some of the big top four consultancy firms and is now working on the client side with an organization called the World of Book Group. Nick, how are you on this fine day? I'm all right. Thank you, Perry. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad. So, Nick, um, we'll start with the question that we always start with, which is, what is your favorite travel destination and why do you enjoy that destination? Um, I'm sat here looking out of the window at the rain pouring down outside and I'm tempted to say anywhere but here <laughs> and it kind of but the answer to that question honestly tends to be New Zealand I'm half Kiwi okay. my dad's family's from there so go there every chance we get it's just a pity it's on the other side of the world rugby's good though I can say yeah I can say how long does the flight take you to get to New Zealand that's a, that's a place I've never been to I've, I've heard lots about I know some a friend of mine has lived over there for a few months but yeah how long does it take to get there um when we went on our extended honeymoon we described it to one of our nephews like this you'll go to you'll you'll go to bed we'll get on the plane you'll wake up we'll still be on the plane you'll go to school we'll still be on the plane you'll come back from school we'll still be on the plane you'll go to bed we'll still be on the plane you'll wake up in the morning we're just getting off the plane oh, okay it's a yeah. long flight yeah, 20 yeah. Foot, 24 hours on the plane but yeah. then you take into account all the time zones yeah yeah so did, did you get off or did you do it in one go or um you... i've done it a number of times uh the long the shortest way of doing it is two 12 hours broken up by lax um the last time i did it with my wife we went via dubai and sydney yeah. okay yeah and what, 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 what is it that kind of brings you i mean to go there a couple of times i mean what what makes oh, you, want to, you just feel at home or? yeah um what's the best way of describing new zealand um yeah it's one of those situations when all the movies don't do it justice it really does look like you're stood in the middle of the lord of the rings because they didn't put any filters on to film it they just filmed it yeah brilliant it's a country twice the size of this one with half the population what's not to like <laughs> oh yeah exactly um yeah, that does look a lovely place. That's a that's a really interesting location. I mean, we, we have had some good good locations before, but I think that's well, that is the furthest. <laughs> any further? You can't get any further. The date line goes just off yeah. to the um, east of the Isles. Yeah, there you go. Then. So, um, yeah, Nick, if if you don't mind, kind of just giving us a bit of a we call it an elevator pitch. You know, if you're stuck sure. in an elevator somewhere. Um, you know, a couple of sentences really just to describe yourself and yeah. Cool. Um, when I'm normally asked to give the short summary of myself, I'm a senior leader with 20 years of experience of building, leading, mentoring and growing analytics teams. So yeah. that's the short answer. If you want me to extend it any more, I start talking about what analytics can do for an organisation. And it's usually making sense of what needs to be made sense of. And what people often find is that when analysts, analysts do their stuff, 80% of the time they're telling you things you already know. Yeah, that's good. That means you're doing the right thing. 15% of the time they're, they're telling you things you probably should have known, but were too busy to know about it. And 5% of the time they're telling you things you didn't even know you could know. And my job is to lead and mentor and grow those people. That's a, so yeah, it's a brilliant analogy. Great stuff. Um, I mean, we we did discuss this a, a couple of weeks ago around the um the analytics and stuff. And I think you know we said about the the impact that data's had on everyone's lives. You know, everyone sat there and watched a news conference by someone like Chris Whitty. Um, and it is it's it's a great analogy really that we say without the data, you you know you don't know what you don't know. Um, yeah, and that, it is. That's, yeah, um, it is strange watching a presentation like what the one that Chris Whitty <laughs> tends to do, 
and going, well, I wouldn't show that graph or I wouldn't display it that way because I see the point you're trying to get, but there's another visualization that would do it better or that's a visualization that experts use and it's going to take you half the presentation to explain what it means, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It also shows how some of the most powerful visualizations are the simplest. The ones that really showed people that the a wave was coming were just simple line graphs. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's so true. It's about knowing your audience. You say obviously, yeah, because you know, especially for, for someone like Chris Whitty, his whole um, his whole audience is the whole of the UK. You've got very educated people right down to people that left school without any education or you know or different levels, different social classes, different backgrounds. So yeah. He, He's about kind of knowing your audience. Great, great point. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, looking looking at the future, what do you see as the biggest opportunity for people within kind of analytics or at the moment? Um, even though we've had the idea of a data scientist for over a decade now, I remember when I was at Deloitte back in 2010, we were talking about the rise of the data scientist back then. Still, I don't think we're using data science as well as we could or as widely as we can and I think the biggest opportunity is still getting in and getting inquisitive and encouraging an organization to get inquisitive one of the big changes that I'm seeing across organizations is the rise of testing I don't mean <laughs> testing in the way that IT understands it I mean scientific testing the focus when you talk to data scientists or when you talk to people that employ data scientists tends to be on the word data Everyone talks about that as the new oil. Actually, there's what I'm trying to do is get people to focus on the science as well, because a lot of businesses are used to business cases as a way of doing things. And I'm not dismissing that. You do need to make sure you're acting on up-to-date information and, you proper, and you've worked out if something's going to be give you value for money. But you don't just need to rely on historical data to do it. Sometimes, and particularly in the e-commerce world, the best way of doing something is just do it and see what happens. You do it with a small set, maybe 10% of your stock or even 1%. Set up a trial group, set up a control group, run it for a while and see what happens. Well understood in the more cutting edge e-commerce world, but you can do it in any world. We do it in world of books, which is essentially trading books, buying and selling books. We run trials where we'll pick a set. Divide, set, specify a percentage of it, sometimes 50, sometimes 10 as our control, run it until we have enough data to be statistically significant and see if it was different. At which point we don't need the business case to be looking at two years worth of historic data. We go, there's your trial. Now we know it works. This is what it multiplies up to. Any questions? We get our yeah. business cases signed off so much quicker. That, yeah, oh, that's a great point. Um, I really like that as a um, as an opportunity. I think it's so true. I mean, you know, the the, the data over the last 12, 18 months, especially, is is not useful post COVID. Yes. Um, so so you know, we don't know what the world's going to look like post COVID. So let's just try to try and just try a few things. Yeah. Um, and the say you've got a blank canvas. So you know, let's let's do it. <laughs> Product owners know it well. Product managers are well versed at the idea of testing things. And particularly in the e-commerce world, it doesn't take long before you've got statistically significant numbers. We've managed to get trials that we could finish in 24 hours because the volumes were large enough. Yeah, no, great stuff. Um, no, really, really like that, that point, yeah. Okay, fine. So, I mean, obviously, as, as we mentioned at the start, you've developed for some of the big consultancies, you've developed now to client side, you know, you have been at that senior level now for, for over your last couple of roles. I mean, what one piece of advice would you give to someone wanting to progress their career in um, analytics? For me, it's it's not, while it's not true to say that anyone can be an analyst, it is true that a good analyst can come from anywhere. Because for me, the key assets the key skills that an analyst needs are they need to be inquisitive and they need to be logical and they need to be uh, mathematical by which i mean number able to play with the numbers yeah but the key of all of those isn't the maths it isn't the stats it's the curiosity mm. and 
any subject, any kind of study, any background, you can be curious. It's a it's the one skill I can't teach. I can teach everything else. If I need you to know a piece of a, a particular coding language, I can teach you. If I need you to to learn a particular statistical method, I can teach you. I can't teach you to be curious. And in fact, these days, most of the time, if you need to learn a new skill, take an afternoon, Google it, look at some videos on a on a MOOC or something similar, and you're fine. In fact, most of my data scientists, if they've got an algorithm to run, they'll just read the notes and run it. It'll be the first time they've ever run it, and it'll work. Yeah, look, that that kind of idea of the curiosity, I think that's it. You know, you, if you're curious of what happens if we do this, then I say the opportunities are endless, going back to your previous point, and, you know, it's, yeah, no, real, I love, yeah, look, that, yeah. yeah and the flip that. side of that, by the way, is that don't be afraid of not knowing. Because yeah. a data scientist and an analyst sees a lot, sees ignorance as an opportunity. So businesses often run scared of what they don't know, saying we need to we need to work out what happened last month. Mm -hmm. Actually, the analysts go, I don't know what happened last month. Let's go find out. Let's mm -hmm. find out. Will it apply next month? Let's have a, let's have a guess what's going to work next month. Let's run some trials and find out. Oh look. We can run a promotion and see what happens. Even when we run our marketing promotions now, we run control groups within them because it means we can say, did it work because of the promotion or did it work just because the sun shone or the sun mm. didn't shine? Yeah, brilliant point. Yeah. Um, okay, great stuff. Um, brilliant. So, obviously, um, as you mentioned, you know, you, you, you have worked at numbers of your organization. Where would you say is your biggest career break? And if, if so is there anyone you want to kind of thank for it or you know, what, what stands out in your career result? To thank one person would be to uh, miss thanking all of the rest. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I I've had no one big career break. Every single step has been driven by others. Um, that's not to say I was following the wind. It's just I've taken the approach. I was advised when I was still in school that a lot of work life is boring. So do the interesting things, because at the very least, you'll be interested and you'll find you've built a career that's interesting. And so that's what I've done. And I've actually been lucky enough, both in consultancy and the work and in client side to be working for people who never pushed down on that. You know, there were always numbers to hit, but their attitude, if you can hit the numbers and do the interesting things, do it. And now that I'm leading, we actively encourage not just my team, but others to be to look up to look for interesting things. If somebody says that's an interesting project, great, you can work on it because I'd rather somebody worked on something that was interesting than something that was dull. They'll do a better job. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Um, I think, that, yeah, that's, that's a great point again. Um, you know, say it is and it's like, going back to that curiosity, isn't it really? If what happens if you do this and what happens yeah. if I'm moving to here and it's, you know, it is that curiosity again that, you know, you say you can't teach it, but, you know, if you're curious, then you'll, you'll develop anyway as an individual. You'll go, well, what happens if I go and learn this? What, what benefit do I have by doing this? Um, no, great. It's a challenge for me as a manager, though, because it's my job to inspire and lead my team. But it's also my job to make them curious. And also, it's my job to inspire and lead my leadership and make them curious, to help them lift their eyes from these are our targets, these are our goals, this is what we've committed to. And this is at the board level to be say, guys, we're doing this for a purpose. Let's not forget our purpose. Yeah. In our purpose, how can we do it better? So World of Books has a very conscious um, environmental, social and governance agenda. It's it's a B corporation, which fundamentally drives that. But it was started because uh, a founder recognised some books were going to go and be t and go to, go and be pulp. Thought we can do better than that. We can sell them. It's a it, we're a re-commerce company in that it's better to reuse than pulp, or in the case of uh, books, recycle. Um, and in all of this, the challenge is always how can we do it better. And as someone who likes curiosity and tries to inculcate curiosity in his team, that challenge of how can we do it better, it's a great one to instill across an organisation. 
we can always do better we can always do more of it but that in itself is an aspect of how can we do better no great stuff um no brilliant points again so obviously as we can tell already you're very passionate about leading the team to get the best results from the data i mean what what inspires you and and why what you know what yeah what gets you out of bed every morning and what inspires you I'm going to go back to that same point. It's curiosity. I want to see what the day holds. I just want to see what's going to happen today. I think, I think, yeah, I think that's a great. I think that might, I mean, I might, I might stop the interview there. I think that's, that's <laughs> a great line to finish. <laughs> but it, it is so true, isn't it? You know, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously, it, yeah, you, you don't know what tomorrow holds. So I say. You, you know your data your data could change daily your data could change minute, you know, by every minute and i think you know it's, it is just uh, yeah i think that's a that's a great point um no great stuff so um i mean if there's anything else you want to add then feel free but if not it was i say that was a, a great final statement so i say it was great to to know you thanks thanks for your time and getting involved nick and obviously it's great to learn more about yourself um and, thanks, and kind of how you, your career journey all right so, yeah, thanks, Nick, and I look forward to catching up with you soon. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks you. mate. Cheers. Thanks, bye.